Anand sir. Yes sir. So, so you may like to change the name. Oh, still my daughter. Thank you. Hasini. Today, my daughter took a class from this, my computer. Happens, it happens. It changes. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Ivan Shu. Pente is not joint yet, huh? Not joint yet, huh? Hello? Sir, Bente will join at 4.15. Okay, but you have to start at what time? We will start at four. Uh, she is having some other program parallelly going on. Okay. So she already informed us that she will join by four fifteen. So okay. I'll be in touch with her. She is the second speaker, right? Uh, she will be the third speaker. Okay. Okay. Anand is the second speaker. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, plenty of time.
अनिल जी नमस्कार Shimanshu, shall we? Yes, sir. Uh, we are on live. We are live on YouTube also. We can start the program, sir. Yeah. Ah, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So, very warm welcome to the inaugural session of the India GDC uh, World Green Building Week 2022 with the theme of Building for Everyone. so we in igbc welcome you all the friends from across the country and we have our own great friend from nepal who has become a uh, igbc member and a strong supporter mr anil ji uh, we are also able to see you so igbc is spreading the wings so we in igbc are very very pleased to have all the support from every stakeholder from every walk of the life who always looking for various initiatives more so for the World Green Building Week celebration, which IGBC leads uh, on third week of the September every year. So, with this, may I now request our uh, national chairman, Mr. Gur Gurmit Singh Arora ji, to address and set the tone for the week-long celebration, which India is doing it in a much much bigger way across the country. So, may I now request, may I now request Mr. Gurmit Singh Arora, national chairman of IGBC. to address and enthuse us and inspire us further to do more things what you sir thank you anand thank you very much am i audible absolutely yes sir yes sir. yes sir okay good evening and namaskar to all of you the cii indian green building council shortly called in abbreviation as igbc is a founding member of the world green building council since 2004 and is glad to celebrate this year the green building week from the 12th to the 16th of september with the theme building for all building for everyone i'm sorry this theme is very important and i will explain to you later why building for everyone is important because green has to become inclusive it has to become a uh, uh, 
full situation rather than pushing builders to build green the consumer must demand that whatever they purchase wherever they live wherever they work must be certified green and must be a healthy living space the global built environment is responsible for nearly 40% of the carbon emissions 50% of the extracted materials but at the same time gives 10% of the employment and 50% of the wealth creation so certainly it's a very important industry we have to now look at how we can reduce the carbon emissions reduce waste reduce energy reduce water and ultimately move towards net zero water uh, net zero water waste wealth and carbon now the target of igbc is that by 2030 all buildings to be constructed in india must be net zero carbon waste water and energy and by 2050 all existing buildings must be converted to net zero so it's a very very the government of india has committed uh, 2070 for carbon neutrality i don't think we will live till then and i do not think we have that luxury to wait till that time so we have to act together now ladies and gentlemen climate change has increased the risk of built assets which is why it is essential to scale up solutions for low carbon and highly resistant sustainable built environments it is time to accelerate climate action and continue to thriving communities and economies i do not know how many of you heard vinisha uma shankar she is a girl of 15 years old from thiru vanna malai which was thiru vanna puram earlier only 15 years old from tamil nadu and she went for the earth shot prize at the cop 26 this year and i quote to you some of her speech of course the speech is much longer she says me and my generation will live to see the actions that are discussed today the point is you are deciding whether or not we will have a chance to live in a habitable world worth supporting or worth caring for we have no time to think we have to act now i am not just a girl from india i am a girl from earth let us stop talking and start doing so ladies and gentlemen we as a green building council especially when we cover the entire green built environment including green schools green villages green hospitals green health healthcare and hospitality both uh, uh, existing buildings or even new construction so it's very very important that we work together to ensure that whatever is built in our country whether it's a bus shelter a police station an interior it must be certified green at the cii igbc we have been working very closely with the world green building council being founders one of the founders of the world green building council which has where now we have 70 green building councils all over the world 36000 plus members who are working towards leading the industry towards net zero carbon healthy equitable and resistant built environments for everyone everywhere i would like to quote to you al gore the past vice president of the us and i quote to you he says the good news is we have everything we need now to respond to the challenge of global warming we have all the technologies we need more are being developed but we should not wait we cannot wait we must not wait and ladies and gentlemen can we really wait do we have the luxury to wait you and i know we do not have the luxury to wait i personally invite all igbc patrons government nodal agencies pioneers of construction industries igbc members our mou partners 29 of my own igbc chapters co chairs core committee members green building consultants igbc accredited professionals our student chapters more than 330 right now supporting organizations and associations and all our friends to actively participate involve community in various impactful activities conducted by igbc across india my colleague mr anand who is going to speak after me and spoke before me also will share the suggested activities to be part of the celebration i also invite all of you to india's flagship event which is going to take place only one and a half months from now in fact less than one and a half months in 40 days the green building congress which attracts more than 3000 delegates in person 
scheduled on the 20th to 22nd October, that's 20th, 21st and 22nd, it's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, at the Hyderabad International Convention Center, Hyderabad. It's a three-day international conference and Asia's largest exhibition on green products. The last physical event attracted 2750 delegates and the last virtual event, event attracted 8024 delegates. So the green building movement is really, really growing, as you know. And I am sure, of course, our target is 3,500, but I'm sure Anand and his team are working towards that to make sure that we have at least 3,500 delegates for these three days. You know, in these three days, we have more than 110 papers. Last time we had 110 papers, presenters. You can imagine people are running from one hall to another hall to, because I want to hear that guy and this is not finished. And so it's quite, uh, the lunch is also from 12 to 3 because there are three hall delegates to eat at the same place. So the lunch is open from 12 to 3. It's quite an exciting event where you meet the green gurus, where you meet the builder community, you meet the architect community, and you see how everybody gets involved in the green mission. Please do not miss this. It's a great opportunity to interact with the best in the industry and to hear the best in the industry. I look forward to your kind support in inspiring more stakeholders through various unique initiatives during IGBC's World Green Building Week. Together, ladies and gentlemen, we can accelerate our actions towards sustainable built environment for everyone, everywhere, by building for the planet, building for communities, and building for economies. I quote to you Antonio Guterres, our UN Secretary General. He says to waste this opportunity would compromise our last best chance to stop runaway climate change. It would not only be immoral, but it would be suicidal. And maybe not suicidal for you, but suicidal to leave behind an already ruined and an earth which you cannot undo what has done, but at least we can do something for the future for our children and their children to come, ladies and gentlemen, and we can do it together. I know we can do it together. At the CIA IGBC, I conclude, we will lead even if others don't. We will act even if others delay. We will build the future even if you are still stuck in the past. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the CII Indian Green Building Council. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gurmit Singh Araraji for the wonderful, uh, inspirational uh, address on inaugurating the India's uh, World Green Building Week celebrations with a powerful inspiration from the What We Are Done from the IGBC, as well as beautiful quotes from various uh, uh, authors and notable personalities, including the young girl from the Tamil Nadu who traveled to the COP26. So once again, thank you very much for your valuable time and joining us and setting the tones up. So with this permission, now may I share a very brief presentation uh, what we can all do or we requeen IGBC request to you all to do as a part of the India's World Green Building uh, World Green Building Week celebration. Himanshu, my slides are visible. Yes, sir. Okay. So once again, very warm welcome to all our friends who are joined in large in number to the brief presentation. I will take only ten minutes. So the Indian Green Building Council, which is spearheading the green building movement in India with the support of all the stakeholders like you who are joined today and who will who are not able to join. So as India has a rich culture and tradition, which is on a, even on a conservative basis, 7,000, 10,000 years old, the 21st century has thrown open enormous amount of challenges. The India is flooded with enormous amount of resources and many of them are very finite and fast depleting. So that is the reason CII, which is a 126 year old Apex Industry Association, which started the Indian Green Building uh, Council in this own office. If you have not visited the office, please do visit us during the World Green Building Week, or as my chairman invited, all of you are welcome for the Green Building Congress, which is happening in Hyderabad, which is around the corner of, uh, it's opposite to our own, and the venue is opposite to our own center. So this, we always believe in partnership. That is the reason we all invited you to join us today also. So this is a classical example wherein the government of unified Andhra Pradesh in Telangana and various stakeholders are partnered right from 2001 onwards in order to shape up this building as the world's greenest building in year 2003, 
and this has emerged as the center of excellence focusing on energy efficiency, environment, obviously green buildings, renewable energy, water and climate change activities. So the center has been inaugurated by then His Excellency late Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam on 14th of July 2004. In fact, this is the only council at that time which was able to write from all the 70 councils across the world. India is the, you should all feel very proud, India GBC is the only council to operate from a certified platinum rated green building ever since we started. So this is one of the amazing, amazing uh, achievement. Together we have done it with the support of all of you. So as I said, the green building word was not so popular in our country 20, 21 years ago when CII found a great opportunity to galvanize all the stakeholders and further inspire in order to shape up all our buildings right from the 2001 onwards. So that is how the IGBC, which stands for the Indian Green Building Council, has been formed by CI in year 2001 with the support of all the stakeholders. Here again, the vision of the Indian Green Building Council is to enable sustainable built environment for all. When we say all, it not only includes the human beings, it includes every living being on the planet Earth, which includes the flora and the fauna. So in the process, we want India to become one of the global leaders in sustainable built environment by 2025. So we also see this World Green Building Week as an, once again, a great opportunity for all of us to recommit ourselves to provide a sustainable built environment for all. So what it started as a one building IGBC headquarters in 2001 with only 20,000 square feet. Today, with the support of stakeholders like you, India, right from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, from Kohima to Kutch, cutting across all the five climatic zones, we have 8,250 plus projects adopting IGBC's rating program, amounting to 8.3 billion square feet. So we are the only council in the whole world to have 30 different unique rating programs. So right from the day one, we know that the places where we live, where we work, where we go for uh, college, our education, our transit are all completely different. Every building typology is a tongue-in-cheek, and I can say it's a it's an animal species by itself. So that is the reason we are the only council to have 30 different rating programs. More so important, you will hear from my colleague, architect Gaurav, on the health and well-being later on. More so important for us, right from 2017 onwards, net zero, becoming a net zero carbon with a huge population of 1.3 at the billion people with a developing country in one go is a very, very critical and very important and a lot of challenges. That is the reason IGBC with the support of the executive board and the various committee members, we are taking it a step-by-step -step approach. Net zero energy to start with because energy efficiency is equally important. We still, as we talk, we are importing enormous amount of coal and oil from elsewhere. So that cause enormous amount of money and the pollution as well as the GH emissions. So net zero energy focusing on enhancing on the energy efficiency as well as on the net zero water net zero waste. So this is how we are taking it up on the net zero moment. So though we have got the world's greenest building title, our own IGBC for headquarters in 2003, we have improved upon the lighting, the air conditioners, cooling towers, the controls. By doing all this, we have brought down the energy demand to the lowest ever possible. Having brought down the lowest energy demand, then we have went ahead with installing countries first 140 kilowatt of bifacial solar PV, which has made our IGBC headquarters in Hyderabad as a net zero positive. In fact, it is exporting more power than what it requires. So it has become a net positive energy building. So as you all heard from us, IGBC is a founding member of World Green Building Council, which represents 70 countries from Australia to Americas on the other side. So whatever we do for this World Green Building Week also in India is represented through IGBC. So whatever we activity we do is all globally recognized. So the every third week of the September, so this week, this year, 12th, that is today, till 16th, or even extended to 17th also, September, whatever you do with respect to greening, small or big, small or big, uh, this is all going to be part of the World Green Building Week celebrations across the globe. So why this World Green Building Week is important or the theme for building for everyone is important. So this year's theme, as you are aware, building for everyone, this is equally important for the economy. So sustainable built environments, bolder our economy's most important asset. There's the important asset is our nature. So he'll hear more from us in the next one week on various sessions. So how we, the building for everyone is going to help 
building for economy. Next is on building for everyone helps the building for planet. Because as you heard from many hurricanes, storms, and recent uh, uh, what you call uh, intense rainfall in Bangalore or in uh, other other countries in the Asia, this is a climate is a crisis actually. So how do we mitigate it? The climate crisis is also a global health crisis. So that is the reason whatever we do, as even a small act, it is going to address the climate mitigation measures. Third is building for everyone means building for communities. Globally, a lot of research, what we have done in the World GBC, says globally 1.6 billion people will lack access to safe water, adequate housing by 2025 if we don't act now. So that is the reason communities are equally important to enhance the equity, enhance the productivity, as well as the bringing the environmental stability. So building for everyone is, it is also, it's a time to put people back at the heart of the built environment. So that is very unique to India. India always has the people in the, in the central pedestal actually. So that is again, we are going back to our own roots in order to put people first, so that the building for everyone really adds and addresses everyone's, uh, everyone's uh, challenge and enhances their comfort levels or livelihoods. So the India GBC celebrates the World Green Building Week led from the front by our National Chairman, Mr. Gurmit Singh Arora and Mr. Tyagarajan, the Vice Chairman of the Indian Green Building Council. And as you heard from our Chairman, 29 local chapters, IGBC APs, the building project owners, consultants, IGL participants, all of you are a part of this entire journey. So these are the few suggestions we would love to give. Whichever possible, you can take it up. It is easily doable, all of them. You please talk to your own community members. Organize a walkathon during the evenings or the mornings for this one week. Even it can start, some of the measures can start symbolically. So even for example, last year, last year World Green Building Week, somebody said, I will not use the uh, elevator for going up to the two floors or two, three floors. They started using the steps, taking the steps. Then it has become an order of the day later on. So the lot of schools and colleges across the country, we are inviting a lot of citizens to bring in more and more awareness. Lots of schools and organizations and colleges, they have the green sketching competition or video messages, whatever you feel like built around the green buildings or building for everyone, bringing in more and more awareness amongst the construction industry stakeholders, more from the students and the colleges also. And for example, as I said, another symbolic representation would be, you can start off by wearing a organic cloth for a day. You can have organic food, or you can transfer, you can knock off your individual bike or a car, use the public transport for a day to start with. If you are doing it so, capture a selfie, capture a video, why you are doing it? Or even a carpooling. Many IT officers, instead of taking every individual car to the same office place, people can group for at least for this one week to follow. Later on, if we are comfortable, it can continue for ever actually. It can inspire us to make this as a mainstream activity. Sapling plantation, though it is very simple, but it adds up to enormous amount of enormous amount of enhancing the biodiversity and bringing in more and more flora and fauna. You can do it at your own office, your own apartments, or even in a small balcony, you put a potted plant and capture it while you are doing it along with the theme of building for everyone. And if you are an IGBC consultant or if you are operating out from an already IGBC certified green building project, take a tour for 10 minutes amongst all your team members. Many of them may not know that they are working in a green building certified by IGBC. They are living in an IGBC certified green home. They are coming to a place of learning like a school or a college which is certified by IGBC. So you please, you take the lead, even five minutes Walk, uh, uh, walking around the building during the tea breaks and lunch break as a part of the World Green Building activity could go. Or if you are part of any heritage city, every city, every village, every town in India has a lot of heritage places. A water body, a palace, or even a deapolated old building. You take them through the heritage walk, how our own ancestors, 7,000 years, 8,000 years ago, they are all living in a beautiful environment, which is in harmony, which was in harmony with the environment. So we can bring back the roots again, which may be an offering a lot of solutions to the modern day problems also. Or a signature campaign. You can put your signature campaign or a mission to even our own building. And we have more than 3,000 buildings which are certified, which are all operational in India as we are all talking. So any of the buildings you wanted to visit, our building is most welcome. Other buildings, they'll be more than happy to invite you, the mission tools. Or the least uh, time you can make a better impact is this promise cards. The promise card templates are available with us. You visit our IGBC.in. So the framework is available. All you have to put is your own commitment to make the world a sustainable one. So you put your own pledge in a way or two. It's a pledge or a promise. 
and share it with IGBC. So this is a promise card is the least one which you can all do. Whosoever is listening to us, I humbly request each one of you to put a promise card and share it with us in this particular format, which will take a minute or two of your valuable time. So there are enormous amount of activities led by our IGBC National Executive Board and 29 chapters across the country. It is all happening. I will not go into the list. This is available in our own website. So more than more than uh, 100 plus activities are lined out. And as our chairman, national chairman mentioned, Green Building Congress started in year 2001 with only 100, 150 or 200 people attending it. So these are the photographs of the last 2018 physical edition wherein the Hardik Singh uh, Purisa, the Honorable Minister, was the chief guest and uh, the governor of the Telangana and uh, Mr. KTR Garu, the Honorable Minister from the Telangana government, they are all actively involved in the Green Building Congress in 2018 before the COVID came, 2018 and 19. So this year's edition is a physical event. I repeat it, it is a physical event happening on 20th, 21st and 22nd of October in Hyderabad at HACC. You are all invited. Please block your diary. This is the Asia's largest conference and exhibition focusing on green buildings. So this year's theme is advancing net zero in buildings and built environment. So this is a theme, which is a subject, which is the subject is going to rule for the another 50 years till India becomes a net zero carbon by 2070. So all of you are invited for this. So even schedule, it starts off with the day zero. We call it on 19th of October, attracting all the 100 and uh, 100 plus, 300 plus uh, IGBC student chapters from the architectural and engineering colleges. We have an international conference. We have an expo wherein 5,000 plus products and technologies and the systems are all exhibited in variety of stalls in the, as a part of the Congress. And there is a lot of thematic conference. It is not only the green. The evening uh, sessions are all having uh, motivational speakers, inspirational speakers coming on the IGBC members meet and leadership awards are also a part of this session. So the 20th edition is happening this year. So it is not a one-time activity or it's a, not in a flash in a pan. We started in 2001. This is a subject with all the Indian construction industry stakeholders love and look forward. So we in IGBC invite each one of the stakeholders who are all listening to us to come and join us on the 20th edition of the India GBC's Green Building Congress, which is happening on 20th, 21st, and 22nd of October next month. So, ladies and gentlemen, whatever you do, either a promise card or a planting a tap playing, having an organic food, going for a green walk, going on a bicycle ride, knocking off your uh, fossil fuel driven cars or a bike, going on a public transport or taking a tour or your own video messages. Uh, painting, whatever you do as a part of the World Green Building Week as an India celebration, please share it, document it, and share it to my email ID or any of our colleagues' email ID. Please make a note. Together, let us all inspire more and more stakeholders to deep dive into this. We have to act upon now. Enough of talking and enough of case studies being discussed in the last 20 years. The time has come for each one of us to do enormous amount of implementation and ensure an action on ground. So to sum it up, ladies and gentlemen, world is witnessing a paradigm shift in the green and the net zero building, how it is all getting designed, constructed, and operated. So this offers enormous amount of opportunity for each one of you in the new building design approaches, newer materials and equipment, which has an advanced enhanced efficiency, eco-friendly, people-friendly techniques are being encouraged. So green makes business sense. So let us all go green. As a part of the World Green Building Week, let us recommit ourselves and inspire more and more stakeholders to join the India's global green building movement. Led from, led from, uh, led, led, there are a lot of people they wanted to get inspired by all of your actions. So please be in touch with us. Visit our website, igbc.in, or write to us how we can provide you more and more sources. Thank you, and over to you, Himanshu. Yeah, uh, so once again, <laughs> it's a privilege to have uh, our great friend from Danish industry, Bente along, amongst us. In spite of the busy schedule, Ms. Bente has uh, agreed upon to share her thoughts and enlighten us as well as to inspire us. So without wasting any further time, may I request 
Ms. Bente from Danish Industry to share her thoughts on this inaugural session of the India GBC celebrating World Green Building Week 2022. Over to you, Ms. Bente. Thank you so much, Mr. Anand. Am I audible? Yeah. You are, you are, and it's are visible. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much for this uh, invitation and opportunity to share um, share some of the results that uh, we've had from our work. Um, and as you will be seeing on the screen, uh, actually, this is uh, what I'm going to share with you is based on a partnership that was uh, formed between um, IGBC and uh, the Confederation of Danish Industry. And thus, just for those of you who don't know us, we are actually the equivalent of, of CII. So, so we are the Danish CII, and we are lucky to actually be based in in India. So, on a daily basis, I'm I'm based in Mumbai, um, which makes it uh, a lot easier for us to to collaborate. Now, what I'm going to share with you is is the headlines and the insights from the work that we have done since 2018. Um, actually, I was um, I was privileged to be at the conference which you just mentioned and referred to Mr. Anand in 2018 and this is where it all began uh, in regards with this project um, because the Danish uh, industry and uh, the Danish Ministry of Foreign Affairs have formed a strategic partnership also with the unions in Denmark to focus on SDG 8 and uh, based on based on this partnership we have been able to um, form a partnership also with IGBC and in the last four years we have um, focused on work uh, which was with the overall ambition to actually contribute to sustainable development of urban areas and workspaces in India and this is based on some work that was done in in Denmark by you could say the uh, the peer to IGBC in, in Denmark, our colleagues in the uh, Danish Architectural uh, Association, which have actually focused on what does workspaces, how does workspaces um, contribute to employers' well-being and, and uh, business performance. And this became the focus of our work. Uh, and the framework for, for the work that we did to see what are the interactions between the build environment and the workspace. How, how do we design workspaces? How does that uh, affect employer well-being and their productivity, their ability to contribute to, to core business performance? And in that sense also, so what is the relationship between how buildings are designed operated and the actual business performance. So that was the mindset we approached um, we approached this project with. And with that in mind, we engaged with uh, 12 companies, 12 businesses in, in, uh, in the Ahmedabad area. Some were um, certified, some were non-certified, some were corporate, some were manufacturing facilities. And based on a very um, thorough and um, you could say very trustful uh, interaction with the management of, of those 12 uh, companies, we were able to collect um, data and understand the dynamic between the three parameters and the three elements that I, uh, that I just mentioned. So based, uh, based on the findings, based on the interactions with the companies and, and the management, we were able to kind of identify three, you could say three motivations, three, um, three inspirations as to why work with green. Why, why at all consider this when you, as a management team, as, as an organization, try to develop your business and try to improve your business performance? Now, what we found was that there are kind of like three drivers for, for um, going green and three, three ways that it interacts your business performance. One is you could say it's actually built into the DNA of, of some of those companies. So call it green call it people oriented, call it whatever you want. These, these companies have done it since they were 
since they started their operation. So it's kind of like built into their philosophy and way of operating as, as organizations. These, these companies with, with that kind of mindset had a strong sense of uh, connection with the community uh, and felt a strong um, responsibility for social uh, security of, of the workers and, and the families and the surrounding uh, community. So, so that you could say was kind of a belief system uh, that going green or taking care, taking responsibility of the environment was actually a way of, of being in the world as, as an organization. So for them, um, operating in a green, uh, with a green mindset was, was there from the very beginning. Then there were other companies that were very much aware of the brand value that operating in a green way gave them. So that was kind of like a advantage to them as, as a company that having this green uh, guidelines as to how to run the company and how to operate with society and with client and internally with their employees was, was how they did it. So they found that the, their employees were, you could say, conscious about the fact that the company was run according to the green standard, according to the green values. They very much saw a, you could say, pull from, from companies or from customers that it was important for customers. They actually required this green perspective uh, in order for them to, to make business with these companies. Um, we also found that because of this green mindset, Actually, employees on a day-to-day -day basis were um, striving uh, and, and able to work more effectively and efficiently and share, you could say, share knowledge and, and support each other and, and support the business as a whole. So this, this whole thing as green as a driver for business was, was also a, um, a, a, threat, a, a trend we saw amongst the companies. Then finally, there was, there was this even greater pull for potentially or especially from, from clients that if we do not have this green sustainable trademark, it would be hard for these comp companies to actually be in business at all. So it was a market driven, you could say, uh, parameter and, and a way for them to develop new technology and new way of doing business. So these were the kind of three, uh, three characteristics we found um, that, that you could say, characterize the companies that, that we engaged with and how they worked with, with the whole green uh, movement. Um, I won't go into details of all the findings and how we worked, but, but we developed a very uh, substantial um, um, uh, report on this, uh, which explains in much more details each of the 12 uh, case studies uh, that we engaged with. And it, it's available on the IGBC um, webpage. So you can, you can find, more, uh, for, find more about it. And I'm also uh, very happy to say that we will actually be presenting this. And my colleague from, uh, from uh, Danish Association of Architectural Firms will be contributing with his insights on, on the IGBC uh, Congress in, uh, in October which was just uh, talked about. So we will be able to engage with you in, in more details for those of you who will be, uh, will be curious to know more about it. Now, because of this uh, very successful collaboration we've had in the last four years, we, uh, we are happy to say that we will continue this collaboration. And we have been granted uh, from the Danish Ministry of Foreign Affairs another uh, four years to continue this work. And the way we're gonna do it is that, um, we found a lot of intangible values from this whole going green uh, movement that we are curious to understand how can, how can we actually quantify them? So, so how, can, how can other companies learn and implement the, the findings we, uh, we, we've, we made in the, first, in the first study? And that we will continue uh, in, the next, in the next phase as one of the tracks that we will be working on. Another track is what was also mentioned by, uh, by Mr. Anand is this whole thing about net zero. And here we will try to focus again based on some, some experience done uh, in, my, in my home country in Denmark and some of our experts um, in the field of, of the net zero uh, carbon. 
field. They will share some experience with us on, again, related to build environment and, and how we can actually, you could say, develop a roadmap to, to guide, uh, guide the industry as such uh, to become net zero uh, in relation to carbon. And, and thereby contribute to the overall ambition of, of, of India becoming net zero in, um, in 2070. I think this is about uh, all, all I have time for now. This was a little appetizer, you could say, but we're happy to share more. And I know my, my good friends in IGBC uh, will, will absolutely be happy to, to guide you into more of the findings we made. And if not before, then I will connect with you in, in Hyderabad at the conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bente. Thanks for the wonderful uh, summary of what the activity led by Danish industry in association with IGBC has been done. In fact, uh, dear participants, we have given enormous amount of reports and other study materials on the tangible benefits on energy, water saved in green buildings. So this is one of the very scientific approach with the support of Ms. Bente and the Danish Industries team, which has quantified, visited the team, developed a matrix on the intangible, the soft editions of how the green features have an impact. As she rightly mentioned, in the Green Building Congress, again, it will be shown in a greater depth. We are all invited to be in touch with us and be a part of the Green Building Congress to know more about the report. And the report is also available in our website. So thank you, Bente. Thanks for joining us and uh, showcasing the Danish industry and the IGBC's association on the overview, giving us the, how we travel and what is this report is all about and how we are going to travel on the four years to come on. Thank you, Bente, once again. Thanks for thank joining us. Thank, thank, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Having thank heard you. about uh, Bente, now comes our own architect friend, architect Gaurav, who's an architect and who is highly committed on the sustainability, minimalistic usage of resources, and he is an author of many of our rating programs involved in various certification, which includes health and well-being. So I don't want it to stand between you and our architect, Gaurav, highlighting on IGBC's unique perspectives on IGBC health and well-being. Over to architect Gaurav. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for that kind introduction. Uh, very good evening to all our participants. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I'll just take a moment to share my screen so that we can deliberate more on some very important concepts of what green buildings are offering us in terms of health and well-being. Uh, I'm sure my screen is visible to all of you all. Yes, we are able to hear and see the slide. In the Thank Go you ahead. very much, sir. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, IGBC and CI has already demonstrated how the green building movement can go strong, how we can participate in it, can be a part of India moving towards a sustainable future. And as we've been doing that since the year 2001, we are also enabling sustainable built environment for all. Now, this is ensuring that India becomes one of the global leaders in sustainable built environment, not just from the participation of government in industry, but each one of us who's sitting here contributing to it and ensuring that our futures are much more environment friendly. Now, saying that, it has become very evident to us that green buildings give us huge amount of tangible savings. In fact, like I mentioned, it has been demonstrated repeatedly that we have a great amount of energy consumption reduction, a water consumption reduction, and a lot of environmental benefits with it. But as we say that, it is also important for us to understand that we should focus on how buildings not just perform well, but also impact and affect the occupants within it. And that is the reason why we speak about the healthy building concepts every time we talk about green buildings as green and health go hand in hand. So thinking about health, safety, improving productivity of employees, increasing the accessibility to occupants for various amenities, all this also becomes a responsibility of building. And uh, I, I always mention this that yes, your building might be very energy, energy efficient or water efficient, but if it is not catering to the comfort of the people or the people are not productive and happy within the structure, that somewhere we are missing out on the concept of green and healthy buildings altogether. So keeping that in mind, uh, it is very important for us to ensure that it's a holistic approach of energy, water, indoor environment, quality, materials, and of course, various innovation and site, uh, sustainable site concepts. Now, I would like to present a few slides to you mentioning why exactly we are reiterating on these very important concepts. Now, if you see certain reports released by the World Health Organization, 
WHO talks about two diseases that are become very common in the world. Uh, one is the communicable diseases such, such as COVID-19, tuberculosis, all these spread through air, water, touch, etc. And of course, we have the non-communicable diseases, which are also called the NCDs, which are, you know, headaches, back pains, uh, you know, uh, you might have certain asthmatic symptoms. And of course, these become adverse in nature, resulting in what you see on your screen, such as cardiovascular diseases, cancer, chronic respiratory diseases, etc. The reason why I bring this slide to you is because WHO states that more than 50% of the world is living with these non-communicable diseases without actually realizing it. Every time we have a headache, we tend to eat a medicine or a pill thinking that, yes, this paracetamol is going to you know, help us out without realizing that the next day, again, you continue having that headache or you might have certain back pains uh, due to posture or you might have certain other issues due to visual comfort. So people don't directly relate to all these issues with the built environment. And most often, like I said, you end up eating a medicine to cure it. So these become chronic in nature, these become repetitive, and we don't realize that it's the built environment that is actually causing it rather than anything else. So these are leading to a lot of issues which we are now calling as the sick building syndromes. Our built environments are impacting us, the way we function, the way we feel, the way we perform. And if we don't cater to our built environments in a more holistic manner, then we start feeling various symptoms of illness for no apparent reason. And this is what sick building syndrome is defined as, where a person in the building suffers from any of the symptoms of illness or feels unwell without any reason, without realizing why it's actually happening. So some of the most common uh, you know, symptoms you may have sometimes uh, felt is like dry eyes, dry throat, headaches, dry skin, etc. Of course, these go on and on. But the point I'm trying to drive here is that most often, these are impacting us on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. We also have a lot of evidence that the air pollution in India is actually becoming worse and worse. It is deteriorating. Uh, it is, in fact, a very uh, bad, you know, a bad thing that you know you might be reading the title on the screen, which says India is home to 22 out of 30 most polluted cities in the world. So uh, it's quite a you know bad number, and we don't want to be there. Now, most often there's debate happening on why is this air pollution happening? And there's a lot of blame put on transportation, uh, crop burning, and you know so on and so forth. But if you see the pie chart on the right, you will notice that majority of it is coming from the dust and construction industry, where all of us as stakeholders, some way or the other, are responsible. So it becomes our, you know, intent and responsibility to reduce this dust and pollution and create purer air you know, qualities if possible. And also this leads to impure air qualities internally in your indoor spaces. So when externally itself, you're not getting access to good, pure, fresh air, then internally statistics and reports state that the air is actually two to five times worse than the outside air. This is purely because you have more volume of air to dilute the contaminants and pollutants outside, whereas internally you don't have that luxury. So it becomes important for us to understand this so that we can also find the solutions. Now, there are also various reports that were released mentioning that though the pandemic has actually become very less and there's not much talk on it, people are still very unsure and not very confident to move around very easily, very openly. They are still very much thinking about uh, how they can continue wearing masks or how they can be safer or sanitize certain spaces. So buildings and building owners have the responsibility to actually ensure that the buildings are prepared, businesses are prepared to receive people, whether it's hotels, offices, or residences. So saying that there's a lot of concentration that is put on energy costs when we talk about building operation costs and maintenance costs. There's also a lot of emphasis put on rental costs to reduce the amount of uh, you know, money you're actually shelling out. But most often people forget the human resource costs. And as per various international bodies, 90% of the building operation cost goes into the human resource costs. So this is important again, because if we can focus and prioritize people-centric design, then we can create happier people, which leads to healthier building. Uh, so we've been mentioning all this and we've been talking about this because IGBC has been involved in a lot of research, a lot of data collection to demonstrate all this. In fact, the first major report that was launched was in 2017, where we published a report called Impact of Green Buildings on Occupant Health and Wellness. 
Uh, the second one, we, of course, tied up with the World Green Building Council there. The second report, which was very important, which focused on cognitive function, uh, was done in collaboration with the Harvard T.S. Chan School of Public Health. Uh, here, we were able to demonstrate that people, the cognitive function of people is very much dependent on the built environment. And finally, uh, as you just heard you know, earlier from our speaker, Bente, we also collaborated with the Danish industry to publish and launch a very important research report on how businesses can boost their performances, how they can boost their brand value and image uh, by creating two healthy building concepts. So the reason why I mention all this is because IGBC has been talking about health and well-being much, much, much before the pandemic started. In fact, we launched our health and well-being guidelines in the year 2017, uh, where we tried to emphasize on the need for safety, health, productivity, and work in a very uh, holistic manner like I've been repeating. So the launch of the rating happened in 2017 where people started adopting these and we, we were given a lot of information from the projects which were certified that they found it easier to uh, reopen and they also found it easier to convince their people that their structures are safer once the pandemic subsided a bit. So uh, we were very happy to actually engage and work with all stakeholders to give short-term and long-term benefits in terms of health and well-being. Uh, in fact, it's a very holistic approach where I'm going on mentioning that there are four major pillars that IGBC recognizes and uh, we emphasize on physical wellness, emotional wellness, intellectual wellness, and social wellness. And that is the reason why it becomes holistic in nature because each pillar of health is you know, individually to be prioritized. And in, when we take care of all these four pillars together, that's when we can say that we can enhance the quality of life for each and every person within that space. So addressing people-centric aspects becomes our main core. Some of the key benefits that uh, most, most often healthy buildings demonstrate, and these are also mapped out by the projects that have been certified are that posit there are positive impacts on occupant health. We have a lot of financial benefits. Lower attrition rate has been reported by the HR team as well. Enhanced safety, hygiene, wellness, increased productivity, talent retention, creativity. Of course, redu reducing the contaminants and microbial count as we you know, emphasize. And of course, enhancing occupant comfort. So the huge amount of benefits that are you know, attached to health and wellness. And uh, we urge all of you all to go through our rating system to understand a bit more. So I would like to now just give you a very brief gist, you know, something that you can use on your day to day basis as well, whether in your homes, offices, or, you know, in a, a external public area, uh, certain concepts and certain features and a feature of health and well being, which you could note down and use for yourselves. So I spoke about the four pillars of wellness. The first one, which is physical wellness. Most often here, we talk about air quality, water quality, comfort, sanitation and hygiene and nutrition enhancement. So when I mention air quality, it is important for all of us to ensure that we reduce the dust pollution, tobacco smoke control in the area. We cater to fresher air, ensure there is proper cross ventilation. We filter out the air from PM particles. We monitor the air. Because with our naked eye, we cannot see what exactly are the contaminants within the space. So ensuring that we measure, monitor, and maintain air becomes important. So measuring for various parameters such as PM particles, carbon dioxide, TVOCs, and of course, reducing the microbial count and emission. So improving good air quality can actually enhance the occupant productivity by 5 to 15% based on how well it is done. Similarly, for water quality, uh, most often, uh, we forget to drink water till we feel thirsty. And scientifically, it has been mentioned that thirst is a very bad indicator uh, because here you've already lost about 1% to 2% of your water in the body. From 72%, you might have already come down to 70%. So redu reduction of even 1% of water in your body leads to a lot of emotional uh, you know, and intellectual negative impacts on your emotion and intellectual wellness. In fact, physically also you get cramps, etc. So ensuring the you know, good amount of pH 
ensuring that you drink good good quality water not just blindly installing ROs where not required but testing the water quality uh, to ensure that you get the right type of minerals vitamins within your space and also green buildings have popularized recycle you know sewage treatment plants so recycled water used for your outdoor exterior landscaping has become a norm more or less so ensuring that the quality of the recycled water is also good enough because otherwise it can lead to transfer of e coli and other bacteria that can transmit through people sitting on the you know in the lawns this is something that health and wellness also focuses on now when we talk about comfort which is one of the most subjective issues because everyone feels comfortable in a different manner uh, we ensure that certain protocols and parameters are followed for this we emphasize on physical uh, you know visual comfort thermal comfort acoustical comfort i'll just take you very briefly and quickly through all of this in one one slide the reason why we talk about visual comfort is beyond just energy savings. Uh, of course, in green buildings, using daylight ensures that we reduce the amount of energy for artificial lighting. But in health and well-being, the focus is on balancing our circadian rhythms, ensuring that our sleep-wake cycles are balanced, and then we feel a little more refreshed and rejuvenated from the continuous 8 to 10 hours of work that we do. So the focus is on natural and artificial illumination, the amount of lighting, the type of lighting, the levels of lighting everything the lux levels everything is uh, very detailed out and of course reducing glare because when you bring in daylight from outside you also bring in a bit of glare so ensuring that we have a glare index followed as per protocols and reduce any discomfort for people internally now one thing is that when we let me take an example to explain this uh, when we very often go to movie theaters uh, sometimes we come back with a bit of headache. Now, this could also be because of the pure, uh, poorer air quality. But most often what happens is that we have one big bright screen there and the remaining area, there is not enough light. So the brightness relationship is very poor there because you have high lux in your, you know, in front of you on the screen, whereas the surrounding area is almost zero. The lux level is almost zero. So our eyes are under constant stress. And because of the stress, we sometimes tend to have headaches. So that is the reason why we mentioned brightness relationship, ensuring that you have this in a ratio of threes to one. That is, if you have 300 lux light in your task area, then at least 100 lux light in the surrounding areas. So that is something that uh, most often we forget and lighting designers keep reminding us uh, and the health and well-being rating is also focusing on. Now, beyond this, connectivity with the exterior, ensuring that we have views to the outdoor. People need to know when they're working for 8 to 10 hours uh, in continuously in their office. They need to know whether it's raining outside, whether it's cloudy, what time of the day it is. So having that connect with nature is very, very crucial. So on your screen, what you see is how our circadian rhythms are balanced and our biological clock is balanced with exposure to daylight. In fact, nowadays, a lot of people are also complaining of vitamin D deficiency in a country where we have a lot of daylight. Uh, you know, it is quite, you know, funny that, uh, you know, we are not giving ourselves that exposure. So designing for that is important. Uh, moving on, uh, we also have thermal comfort where we talk about temperature, humidity and air velocity. Now, the reason why I mention all three is because most often people just cater to temperature and forget that humidity levels and air velocity also need to be taken care of to make people thermally comfortable. Similarly, with acoustics, one of the most important topics, which is very much neglected in the industry, uh, we need to ensure that with open offices becoming popular, people get more uh, noise-free zones to work in somewhere where they can be more productive, not get distracted. We can do this by using various materials, insulation, in ensuring that the reflectivity on the surfaces increases to dampen the sound and so on and so forth. Uh, and of course, olfactory comfort, uh, our natural response to any odor and smell is to just add an aerosol just have some spray there with fragrance and then most often, you know, that's what is done. So here the idea is to neutralize the odor rather than masking it with a fragrance because it will lead to a lot of, you know, headaches to people who are slightly more sensitive. They can have asthmatic attacks and so on. So first we propagate and advocate that neutralize the odors and then move forward to isolating the spaces and exhausting the spaces. And similarly, ergonomics is something that we keep highlighting a lot from various flexibility in furniture, ensuring that the space is properly planned, even in terms of emergencies, exigencies, people should 
follow a proper path to move out and should not end up in accidents. It should be easy for them to move out. Anthropometry should be followed, the height set which the switches are put, the door knobs. So ergonomics deals with all of these aspects and the health and well-being details out all of this in a very proper format. So uh, it extends into designing for differently able people, some very illustrative uh, you know, points are in front of you, such as uniform floor levels, non-slippery slippery ramps. Uh, but the idea is that when we speak about differently able, please don't mistake this for only physically handicapped people, somebody who's temporarily ill or sick, or a small child, a elderly man, everyone fall into the category of differently able. So we should not just think from the perspective that we are designing for physically uh, disabled people. It is for each and everyone, in fact, for you and me as well. So, you know, ensuring it's done in a proper manner is important. A lot of eco-friendly housekeeping chemicals have become the norm of the day. People are using this, especially after COVID. Sanitation has become, you know, in it's increased in uh, the frequency. But we also understand that using harmful chemicals can create a lot of a negative impact on our body. So ensuring that we use eco-friendly housekeeping chemicals, make sure that these are also baby safe in many places. Uh, and we also have Green Pro, which ensures it goes through the life cycle assessment and certifies all these housekeeping chemicals. So Green Pro certification is something that all of you all can go and visit the website where not just housekeeping chemicals, but various green products, technologies, uh, and you know various manufacturers who provide this, all of them are listed on the website and you can procure this for yourself. I'm almost at the end. Uh, I will just take a minute more to just talk to you also about the emotional intellectual aspects. So, like I said, it's important to be physically fit, ensure that physical wellness is taken care of. But emotionally also, people need to be at their best. We need to ensure that the spaces are safer, create a more holistic and happy environment, have proper connectivity to biophilia and the external environment, and also create an environment where people feel you know, very safe and want to come back, especially for offices. So as you can see on your screen, this can be done in various ways. We can have breakout spaces, we can have open spaces, bring in nature internally to the building as well, rather than externally. Provide facilities, provide spaces where people can group together, can celebrate, can you know, uh, you know, have certain recreational activities, so that bonding amongst people and occupants, you know, becomes more. In fact, this moves, this you know, uh, translates into social wellness also, because when we talk about social wellness, uh, people might be very physically fit, but unless and until you have your occupants coming together and interacting and bonding, uh, you don't see them being very productive. You just see them, you know, being isolated in certain spaces. So in India, most most of us as Indians, we don't have a very isolated, we don't lead a very isolated life. We are used to certain interactions. In fact, even if you're just standing waiting for a you know, bus or an auto, you have certain people moving around. So you feel safe that yes, there are people around me and I'm not isolated. I'm not away. Uh, some things that we see in the Western world where people are very much isolated. So offices are ensuring that people come together. In fact, even when we had, our, you know, uh, the uh, Independence Day celebration, we saw that historically the number of people who came together to hoist a flag, uh, it was the, the number was huge. So this was possible only because facilities were able to provide spaces for people to come together. And of course, safety aspect, not to forget how people can, you know, you can create safer spaces for people in terms of fire safety, women safety, surveillance, eliminating isolated spaces and so on. So with all this, I would like to come to an end and conclusion that health and well-being is become the norm of the day and we should ensure this is implemented in each and every space, whether residences or offices. It is a great time to start with it right now. We know the positives of it. We know how to do it. It is only a matter for us to implement it. So with that, I'd like to end this presentation and thank you all for patiently listening to me. Thank well, you. Super presentation. Thank you, sir. Very well done. I must add, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, the projects that we have certified for health and well-being, especially the software centers have reported 20 to 25% higher productivity rates. There are offices where you have to actually see your watch to say, oh my God, it's seven o'clock, I have to go home. There's no, uh, you don't feel tired at all. Uh, there are hospitals where recovery rates are 15 to 20% faster. 
and I do not want to take the names uh, right now, but there are enough examples. Anybody wants the names, I can give them to you, which show that green buildings not only make bus business sense, but they are healthy and spaces which in in enhance your health and well-being. In fact, if you look at the Paharpur Business Center in Delhi, uh, every six months, the employees in that building are tested for various parameters and employees in the neighboring buildings are also tested. And you will find a difference of about 25% in the health parameters and the readings and the reports we get, the medical reports. So it really makes not only business sense to go green, it's good for your health, good for your family. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. Anand, sorry I interrupted. No, no, no. It's always a pleasure. You have topped it up with the amazing points since you have the entire rich experience of working with all these projects of Vainur Hospital, Bharpur, and it is always. So to sum it up, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before I open up the floor for Karthi Kumar, once again, thanks, uh, uh, Gaurav, for the wonderful presentation on taking us through the entire elements on the health and well-being and how the IGBC's rating program on health and well-being brings in the five elements of nature, what the Indian mindset says or the Indian philosophy says, uh, and how the entire rating program touches the green features on the five senses of the people. And Gaurav always says internally when we talk uh, earlier, BMS used to be the building management system. Now with IGBC health and well-being, it is a body, mind and soul. It's no more a building management system alone. Building management system is equally important. All the green features, how it impacts my body, mind and soul. That is what we call it as a BMS in the health and well-being perspective. Once again, thanks uh, Gaurav for taking us through the IGBC health and well-being rating grants. We have another couple of minutes with your permission, uh, Chairman Zab, we will ask. Karthik Kumar, can you, can you unmute yourself and uh, open up with your query or a concern? If we know the answers, we will come back to you. Mr. Karthik Kumar? I think you have to unmute yourself. You raise your hand. Or if Mr. Karthik Kumar is not listening or not able to hear us, any, any queries or any, any queries from the participants who have joined us in large in number for the last one hour, thanks for your time. Any questions, queries? Yeah. From the participants? Please, please. Yeah, please uh, carry on. Can I ask a question to the IGBC? Yes, yes, yes Abhinav, yeah, please. Yeah. So, um, like, I am an architect who's been building a lot in uh, natural materials and also have a lot of green rated projects. Our first office in 2005 was green rated in um, way back when IGBC had just started in India. But recently, most of our projects are built in mud and natural materials. And the uh, and our recent, we were doing a center for sustainability in Kanal. And uh, the IGBC rating, uh, does it allow for mud any uh, other, you know, uh, points and things to get it green rated because natural materials and IGB, IGBC ratings are not, um, you know, on the same page. That is what the uh, AP accredited professionals would come for rating had the question. So I would like to know if there are any, any other worldwide also, if there are any other uh, examples of mud buildings which are rated by the Green Building Council. Or is there any provision or could we make any provisions for points for natural building materials because they are in any case more ecological? Uh, Madam, I will, uh, I will not answer. I will not answer your question. In fact, uh, IGBC, today morning only we have shared with the Philippines uh, Green Building Council on the session on world showcasing all the mud buildings or four of them, which personally also I love those. Uh, buildings which are all appreciated. Answering your question, in fact, IGBC is the only rating program which encourages the architects and designers like you in the sustainability. Before we start with the, there are five modules, sustainable sites, water, energy, materials, and indoor air quality. IGBC is the only rating program which brings in a sustainable design be, beyond or before this five elements, number one. Number two, IGBC encourages local and regional materials. IGBC encourages rapidly renewable material. It is a wood or a mud or whatever it is. I would love to, I would please write a mail or share your email ID. Me and my colleagues will talk to you. In fact, you will be getting more points with respect to the IGBC rating program. And as you heard from my own colleagues on the health and well-being, we are not only focusing on energy friendly, environment friendly. These are all people friendly also. So the mud blocks as 
place it will be breathable it is like you are wearing a shirt which will be breathable we all love it in fact if you are going to the igbc's net zero carbon which talks about the embodied energy even a conventional brick as you all know that if you take the brick then you burn it in the clean the carbon embodied carbon may be multifold when compared to the mud so we encourage more and more materials we would love to talk to you uh, offline and then we will provide you all the resources thank you so much i'll be in touch with you regarding its certification yeah yes yes kartik are you there mr kartik kumar or i think he has raised the hand or pressed the button by mistake a any queries or any okay if there are no other questions we in igbc once again thank our national chairman mr gurmit singh ji joining all the way and uh, more than one and a half hours he has spent the valuable time in officially inaugurating the world green building week celebrations in india and we also thankful for all the participants who have joined in large in number we see a lot of chats on the promise cards and others please do whatever small big whatever you are able to start symbolically also which will have a greater greater impact and it will inspire all of us in team igbc and we also thank mr anil ji and others who have joined away from your all the neighbors and part of our country who have joined us and you are able to take us to the agenda beyond our borders beyond the beyond our borders so we in igbc once again thank each and every one of you you are igbc you are the indian green building movement who always play a very very vital role and you spend enormous amount of time energy in bringing in more and more stakeholders so once again we in igbc thank you all we look forward to meet you all in the green building congress on 20th 21st and 22nd of october in hyderabad and please don't forget to share whatever you do even today's program whatever you are learning put it in a phrase send it in email to me or my colleagues whom so you met now himanshu me or danush so once again thank you all for joining us in large in numbers have a great evening and have a india celebrations we all collate it and share it to the world green building council world green building council always feels india gbcs uh uh collect a uh, collection of activities are highly diverse highly vibrant and they are always look forward to the india gbcs report after this world green building week celebration is over so once again we in igbc thank you all for joining us have a great week ahead that is a world green building week for building for everyone thank you thank you everybody namaskar so thank you himanshu and team thank you gaurav and team for joining us so with your permission i am well done all of you well done all of you very well done thank, thank you. you sir thanks for your valuable time thank you sir and that presentation is superb on health and wealth yeah yeah Mr. Sandeep Tullalikar, thank you. You're welcome, sir. With all the hearts, I can send you. <laughs> beautiful, beautifully done. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you.